Yeah. Yeah. We had that. We have a, a we had hosted an exchange student from Indonesia. So when the girls heard that, they're like, "You're okay." So I messaged her, and she's like, "Yep, we're okay. Different island." Oh, I said. Technology. That's what technology should be doing. <laughs> Different island. It was the main island. Okay. Yeah, uh, where Jakarta is. Yeah. So Java. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Big volcano in uh, um, Iceland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's always fascinating. Mm -hmm. 22. I'm going to try and so we're going to try and tackle 22, 23, 24. And then the last one is going to be hopefully December. <laughs> Yeah, and then we're gonna take a break. <laughs> we're gonna tackle proverbs, right? Tackle <laughs> proverbs. Um, so if if the cards and the stars align, let's do it. So let me. I'm gonna. I like putting up the Hebrew and the English together. Um, but there's no. What's that one. Well, that's what I want. But I gotta change my screen. <laughs> There. All right. I'll begin. Here we go. Chapter 22. A good name is to be chosen rather than great riches, and favor is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord is the maker of them all. The clever see danger and hide, but the simple go on and suffer for it. The reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor in life. Thorns and snares are in the way of the perverse. The cautious will keep far from them. Train um, children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is the slave of the lender. Pick up. Those who, gen those who are generous are blessed, for they share the their bread with the poor. Drive out a scoffer and strive strife goes out, quarreling and abuse will cease. Those who love a pure heart and are gracious in speech will have the king as a friend. The eyes of the Lord keep watch over knowledge, but he throws the words of the faithless, overthrows the words of the faithless. The lazy person says, there's a lion outside. I shall be killed in the streets. <laughs> the mouth of the lion Mouth of a loose woman, deep pit. He with whom the Lord is angry fails, falls into it. Folly is bound up in the heart of a boy, but the rod of discipline drives it far away. Oppressing the poor in order to enrich oneself and giving to the rich will lead only to loss. Mm -hmm. All of them are ready and good, so that your trust may be in the Lord. I have made them known to you today. Yes, to you. Have I not written for you 30 sayings of admonition, knowledge, to show you what is right and true, so that you may give a true answer to those who sent you? Do not rob the poor because they are poor or crush the afflicted at the gate, for the Lord pleads their cause and he the spoils of life, those who despoil them. For you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. 
don't agree to guarantee another person's debt or put up security for someone else. If you can't pay it, even your bed will be snatched from under you. Don't cheat your neighbor by moving the ancient boundary markers set up by previous generations. Do you see, do you see any truly competent workers? They will serve kings rather than working for ordinary people. That was confusing. I think. Hmm. Not, not because you read it confusing. I was just like, it was on a nice pattern and then all of a sudden uh, it changed. Changed. It changed. I think it, it kind of the pattern changed ever since verse 17, yeah. right? Yeah, it just right. kind of was yeah. like. Yep. Yep. It, it seems so simple when you read it. Mm -hmm. You know, good things happen to good people, bad things happen to people who don't sure do things right. Sure, sure. But in reality, it gets so tangled up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ah, true. True. A lot of it is just common sense, you know, doing the right thing. Yeah. And not going out and Bad things. Yeah, the last several thousand verses. Now. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The same thing. <laughs> True. It's just in different ways. The um, Luther Seminary study pointed out verse 28 do not remove the ancient landmark that your ancestors set up. Um, don't steal another person's land. That's the summary. This saying refers to moving a boundary marker. Archaeologists have found such markers which often had a curse written upon them, announcing that various evils would fall upon anyone moving the marker. And then this says, see also 23, chapter 23, verses 10 and 11. Concern for the widow, the orphan, and the poor was a mark of wisdom literature in Israel and also throughout the ancient world. So. Mm -hmm. um, here's the, um, you want to pull out the comment for 28. Refers to markers that form property lines. Because the gift of land was a sacred gift of God, these were not to be moved. Do not wear yourself out. This, this is, this is, goes into 23 verses four and five. Do not wear yourself out. This proverb cautions against spending too much effort on seeking riches because they can suddenly disappear. Sure. Um, verse six in 22, the train your children in the right way and when old, they will not stray. Um, at this verse, that's a very popular verse. Uh, very, and it's been quoted in different ways and like in language in different ways. Um, but, you know, as sometimes, unfortunately, it's been attributed to more of abuse, too. Yes. Um, and that's not yes. what it means yes. at all. Yes. It does not mean abuse. No, um, it emphasizes the importance of early foundations. Early foundations. Kind of like, I mean, it's just... Um, I'm just going to use an example of learning how to play basketball. You know, you got to start by teaching them that this is a ball <laughs> and well, how you dribble it with one hand and you can't use two, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, and if you're learning like a sport, it's more for like, you got to practice every day and that's training, that's mm -hmm. training. And it's just like muscle memory and really in faith and uh we do have muscle memory oh yeah we sure do um and i this is I just constantly um really try to um with parents with young children to bring them to church even if they don't want to sit for five minutes we have different spaces here um but just that pattern of mm -hmm. coming to church get in that pattern. Um, and then when you understand when you have to miss a week, then you understand what you're missing. And then you kind of are able to get back on because you're trained. We were taught in college that there are lots of ways to 
to raise a child well. Mm -hmm. You can do it very strict. You can do it halfway in between. You can do it, you know, easy going. Sure. And as you see that in the classroom, there are classrooms where those kids can get up and go wherever they want to, learn, but it works for them. Sure. And there are classrooms where they have to sit there with their hands folded all the time, and that works too. They said the trick is be consistent. Absolutely. Don't let them go and then try to reel them back in. Right. Don't don't start out with them um, real serious and, and obedient and then let them. That's confusing to kids and they can't deal with that. You have to. And I think that, that goes back to this. Sure. Well, and, and I mean, this is train, I, I believe train children in the right way, which is, is really meaning training children under the of God's commandments, mm -hmm. God's, mm -hmm. God's way of life in a sense, meaning uh, pretty simple, easy instructions. Um, and how that translates to churches today is I, I would love, um, you know, some churches do this better than others, but to really have, keep up, I mean, confirmation usually ends about eighth grade or ninth grade, but really, in a sense, that's not the end. And I, I always try to, you know, keep yeah. coming, keep yeah, doing it. This doesn't end. Yeah. This yeah. doesn't. Yeah. And really, um, Christian education, I mean, really should parallel just like your own education. Um, all the way up to senior of high school. And even if you go to off to college, um, you know, connect with the church and do something. It, it's, and then we're lifelong learners, right? <laughs> when we're all said and done. So. Um. Oh, yes, that's right. You know, they got what, hockey on Sunday as always. They do. Sports. They do have they do. hockey on Sundays. Yeah. But you know, in Mosley, it was always no sports, absolutely not on Wednesday nights. It was confirmation classes and CCE classes, well, yeah, yeah. all that stuff. It's and bad it was bad now. And That's hockey bad. was some other time. Right. It was Saturday. Saturday. It wasn't they Sunday. always, there's Sunday morning, Sunday Wednesday. Yeah. So it's kind of definitely, it's definitely changed. Society is. Well, and, and I mean, it's getting back to training and it's and encouraging um, families to come back and learn at church and to keep up. And, and we got to, you know, do stuff that we haven't done before, some new stuff. Like yesterday evening, the Mosinee community worship was a new thing. Although I thought about, it would be fun to do like a summer grill out, like at the park, like all three mm -hmm. of us again or something. Yeah. I don't know what it would be, but I'll have to bring it by those two yeah. pastors. <laughs> no, um, Cornerstone, Pastor Andrew. Yeah. Well, because the, the priest from the Catholic Church passed away not too long. But we did have a lot of, we actually had more people attend from the Catholic Church yeah. than any other, than St. John was second. So that was fun. I was so glad. Yeah. I was so glad. It was just, it was really neat. Really neat. So anyone can watch it if you want to watch it on Thanksgiving. It was, it was <laughs> well, any other wisdom from chapter 22? How about we'll see chapter 20. The mouth of a loose woman is a spirit. <laughs> you know what? I, I read that and I heard that and I was like, kind of giggled to myself. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, when we keep talking, sometimes that does happen and you kind of feel like, oh, I can't, you can't dig yourself out again and you just have to tell yourself to stop. <laughs> Oh, we've heard that phrase a few times throughout Proverbs, have we? The loose woman. Yeah, I think we've heard that Definitely, for right. sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> for sure. And again, like, um, I would even um, maybe tether it to verse six. It's like, train children in the right way. It's more of a shepherd there's parameters you know 
Um, and even kind of going back down to the landmark, don't remove, don't remove the landmarks from your own life. Because no. if you remove the landmarks, then um, you have a loose woman, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. Let's start with 23. I'll start with. Okay. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, observe carefully what is before you and put your uh, put a knife to your throat if you have a big appetite. <laughs> hey. Or eat before you go. <laughs> wow. Do not desire the ruler's delicacies for they are de uh, deceptive. Do not wear yourself out to get rich. Be wise enough to detest. Wait, desist, that's not detest, desist. When your eyes light upon it, it is gone. For suddenly it takes wings to itself, flying like an eagle toward death. Do not eat the bread of the stingy. Do not desire their delicacies. For like a hare in the throat, so are they. Eat and drink, they say to you, but they do not mean it. You will vomit up the little you have take, eaten, and you will waste your pleasant word. You will, yeah, you will waste your pleasant words. I have absolutely no idea. Let me read that again. Okay, yeah. wait. You will vomit up the little you have eaten, and you will waste your pleasant words. Uh, do not speak in the hearing of a fool who will only despise the wisdom of your words. Do not remove an ancient landmark or encroach on the fields of orphans. For, the rede for their redeemer is strong. He will plead their cause against you. Take up 12. Your mind to instruction, your ear to words of knowledge. Do not withhold discipline from your children. If you beat them with a rod, they will not die. If you beat them with a rod, you will save their lives from the soul. My child, if your heart is wise, my heart too will be glad. My soul will rejoice when your lips speak what is right. Do not let your heart envy sinners, but always continue in the fear of the Lord. Surely there is a future and your hope will not be. My child, and be wise and correct your mind and your way. Do not be among wine or among drinkers of meat. A drunkard and a glutton will come to poverty, and drowsiness will give you pray. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother who is old. Buy truth, and do not sell it. Buy wisdom, instruction, and understanding. The father of the righteous will greatly rejoice. But he who begets a wise son will be glad in him. Let your father and mother be glad. Let her before you rejoice. My child, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my way. For a prostitute is a deep pit, and adulteress is a narrow well. She lies in wait like a robber and increases the number of the faithful. Who have a little? Who have sorrow? Always fighting, he's always complaining, has unnecessary bruises, has bloodshot eyes. It is the one who spends long hours in the caverns trying out new drinks. <laughs> Don't gaze wow. at the wine, seeing how red it is, how it sparkles in the cup, how smoothly it goes down, for in the end it bites like a poisonous snake. It stings like a viper. You'll see hallucinations and you will say crazy things. You will stay here like a sailor tossed at sea, clinging to the swaying mass. And you will say, they hit me, but I didn't feel it. I didn't even know it when they beat me up. When will I wake up so I can look for another drink? Wow, and that's how 23 ends. Holy cow. Well, this is absolutely different than even chapter 22. Yeah, they sure switched um... A lot of the Proverbs uh, was the same practically until this point. There's a lot of do nots and yeah.
Well, I mean, yeah, I, I guess like from my understanding, you know, wine was um, better to drink than water um, because water had a lot of impurities and alcohol, like making wine kind of killed all that. And so, um, but in a sense, I mean, when you sit and you eat a whole bag of M&Ms, like, and I'm not talking like little, like a big <laughs> yeah. size, like the sharing size, yeah. you know, that doesn't make you feel good. So that's a good example of, um, in a way it is a lot like this. Sure. It's what right, do what's right, don't do what's wrong. It's written in a whole different yeah. style. To really know your parameters, mm -hmm. know your parameters. Um, and that's what parenting is, that's what they're saying, is teaching the young ones to know the difference. Sure. And I, I always think that, you know, well, I mean, it's true, whenever you teach a child something of like really big importance, you kind of recall that and remember that for yourself as well. So oh, yeah. I'm sure that you know, these teachable moments, the adults are like, oh yeah, I don't need to do that. <laughs> um, but there are such big, big gaps in people, in children and grown-up people. I mean, some children don't know it's wrong to look at somebody else's paper and then copy it on your head. People, people are not the same at teaching their children right and wrong. Mm -hmm. Some people just let it go by, and that's what they say. Yeah, I know a whole family. There was a whole family that it was by seventy, and those children were taught to steal. They were taught that other people <laughs> have things they don't have, and it's their responsibility to use the stuff. And they were taught to go in the stores and steal and steal from other kids' desks. That's what they were taught at home. Mm. So parents don't always treat them sensibly. You know it's going to be trouble when you got one of those kids because it's, right. it's a problem to you. And, and how to break that? That's right. Cycle. Training. Yeah. But I'm mean, repetition. But if there's nobody to break it, right? They raise their kids and it's just keeps. And the thing is, can't go to the family for help with it. No, you know, you can't yeah. report to the family your child is stealing or something. Else. So, yeah. Uh, the, I know I have the little, you see, I have the little notes about um, 13 and 14 that the whole rod and feeding thing is not mm -hmm. my favorite. Um, okay, little bits of a you know, of a chapter oh, yeah. or a verse and say, see, this is what it says in the yeah, Bible. Right. And they don't give the whole thing yeah. context. Well, and um, I would say that, um, I mean, so going back to like chapter 22, verse six, train your children in the right way. And when they old, they will not stray. It's um, what I'm thinking. So the rod, was a tool for shepherds to use to herd sheep, to bring parameters. Now, sometimes you would, you know, I mean, they were animals, so maybe it could, it would be a little bit rougher, but yeah. not, you, you know, it's not, so that's the staff. There's a rod, rod and staff, like Psalm 23, rod and staff, they comfort me. So it's more just like a wooden, it's a stick with no hook on it, but it was more like to just guide, guide like this. Not pound on them. Yeah, I mean, you. I, I don't know if you've ever gone to, and seen like um, the hog show at like the uh, county fair or something, but they have a rod with a little itty bitty little flexible thing, but they don't like whip it, but they kind of, you know, yeah. tap yeah. and yeah. want to go in that direction. Um, so I, I would say that's more of that, you know, if they're kind of, you tell them to go left and they're going right, you want to kind of put, you know, guide them in a sense. Um,
So that's what I kind of think, but I don't, I don't think it's meant to be whack them on the side of the head so that no, they can get I, a concussion. I can't believe that adults hitting their own children is any more correct than a child hitting another child. Correct. I mean, right. Just the exactly. Really <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. happens. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not what really <laughs> That's not, that's not the point. That's the point. But I think that maybe it's quite helpful if you think about Psalm 23, because a lot mm -hmm. of people know that. But I run and they staff, they comfort me because they provide parameters. Parameters. Not loose women, children, <laughs> dogs, cats, whatever. Any other for about 23. The ending, um, I'm always going to remember Proverbs 23 now. When shall I awake and I will see another drink? You know, it's just. Wow. It's not nice to over drink. Yeah. But I'm not good. If you eat, but I don't feel it. When I wake up, when will I wake up so I can have another drink? Oh, it's just, it left, it left mm -hmm. you with a cliffhanger there, yeah. but really, in a sense, just don't drink too much. Right. Don't I would worry a little bit as to what will spark up an interest in drinking in some people. Gosh, if you yeah, drink, you it think. doesn't hurt. Yeah. If, you, if something happens, it won't hurt. I mean, will that interest them in drinking? Will that make it appealing? Oh boy, people wake up wanting a drink. I mean, if you if you, if you ask an alcoholic, yeah, they will tell you that when you drink too much, you don't feel a thing emotionally and physically. They will do stupid things. Um, and they don't realize how stupid they were, I told you. Right. It's a continuous cycle. Continuous cycle. And again, you know, going back, this is a teachable moment. Yeah. You know, but, you know, at reading this, if somebody is not versed in what the Bible is all about, they might go and experiment I and be like, so. yeah. yeah. I, We're not going to play 99 bottles of beer on the wall <laughs> at church. <laughs> Take one down, pass it around. Nope. Any other thoughts on 23? Chapter 24. All right, let's see, let's see. This is on a roll, I'm, I'm learning. Verse one, do not envy the wicked nor desire to be with them for their minds devise violence and their lips talk of mischief. By wisdom, a house is built and by understanding it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wise warriors are mightier than strong ones, and those who have knowledge than those who have strength. For by wise guidance, you can wage your war, and in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Wisdom is too high for fools. In the gate, they do not open their mouth. Whoever plans to do evil will be called a mischief maker. The devising of folly is sin, and the scoffer is an abomination to all. Want to pick it up at 10? If you hold back from rescuing those taken away to death, those who go staggering to the slaughter, if you say, Well, you did not know this. Does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? But does, but does not does not he know? 
Yeah. Yeah. Does not he who keeps watch over their soul know it? And will he not repay all according to their deeds? My child, eat honey, for it is good. And the drippings of the honeycomb are sweet to your taste. Know that wisdom is such to your soul. If you find it, you will find a future, and your hope will not be cut off. Good. Oh, why? Would you like to swim? But though they fall seven times, they will rise again. <clears throat> but the wicked are overthrown by calamity. Do not rejoice when your enemies fall, and do not let your heart be glad when they stumble, or else the Lord will see it and turn away his anger from them. Do not fret because of evildoers. Do not envy the wicked, for the evil has no future. The lamp of the wicked will go out. My child, fear the Lord and the King, and do not disobey either of them, for disaster comes from them suddenly. And who knows that the ruin that both can bring? Of the wise. Here are some further sayings of the wise. It is wrong to show favoritism when passing judgment. A judge who says to the wicked, You are innocent, will be cursed by many people and denounced by the nations. But it will go well for those who convict the guilty, rich blessings will be showered on them. An honest answer is like a kiss of friendship. Do your, do your planning and prepare your fields before building your house. Don't testify against your neighbors without cause. Don't lie, don't lie about them and don't say, now I can pay them back for what they've done to me. I'll get even with them. I walk by the field of, field of a lazy person, the vineyard of one with no common sense. I saw that it was overgrown with nettles, it was covered with weeds, and the walls were broken down. Then as I looked and thought about it, I learned this lesson. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. Then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. Is it? Yeah. And poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed warrior. <laughs> yeah. Well, the pattern changed the whole, I like from the yeah, previous it's, chapters. It's I like my child eat honey for it is good and the drippings of honeycomb are sweet to your taste. I, I like, well, I like honey. I do too. I love honey. And yeah, those combs are Yeah. Now they're so expensive. I look at them and I think, I don't want one of those, but then they're like $6. Mm -hmm. For this just so. Remember putting that wax on your bread? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh it's so, and it's supposed to be very good. Yeah. Like that wax is supposed to be really good for mm -hmm. you. And so it's funny for that matter. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a, uh, our neighbor yeah, raised bees and, mm. and, and honey. And our family was quite poor. And they used to give us a big bucket of honey. It was like Christmas when she'd come over and there'd wow. be honey. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. In the um, study here, they highlighted verses 21 and 22, um, the, and they summarized it by honor both God and your government. Both God and government should be honored and obeyed. Jesus said the same thing in Matthew. No, I was just going to say that. Jesus, whose name is on the coin. <laughs> well, yeah. That's presuming that the government is good. Right. It's Correct. kind of like having a good parent. Correct. I, I remember right. as no. kids in grade school, they'd say, when do you have a right to disobey your parent? And they told us, they tell you to do something. 
That's not right. Correct. They tell you to do something wrong, you have the obligation. And that was so confusing yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're, our parents were good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can right. imagine that. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I guess really in a sense, um, government at this time was supposed to be fashioned after what God's rules. Yeah. And, well, government and, and religion were kind of tangled up in mm -hmm. ways in those days. They, were, they didn't try hard to separate them. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and if the poor and the needy are not being Take you know, saw it, you know, taking care of in a sense. Then what are we called to do in that time? Help governments do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's interesting. Well, and then you know, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber. Ah, these endings are driving me nuts. But. Yeah, you can have two people read this and interpret it and end up with two really different but possibly correct interpretations. Right. So, I mean, really, uh, uh, sleep is good, but if you sleep too much, then you're not diligent in your work and no, your balance. And No, they obviously speak against laziness. Right. But you work against the lazy. I mean, uh, easier yeah, to understand right. than right. sleep. Like drinking too much wine. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on 24? Do we want to tackle 25? That'll be the last one. And then we'll have those three next week and three oh. the next week. So this is. Um, Starts off a little bit different. Now we're going into different proverbs. Let's start. These are other proverbs of Solomon that the officials of King Hezekiah of Judah copy. It is the glory of God to concern things, to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. Like the heavens for height, like the earth for depth, so the mind of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen, do not hastily bring into court for what you will do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame. Argue your case with your neighbor directly and do not disclose another secrets or else someone who hears you will bring shame upon you and your ill repute will have no end. Take it away. Yeah. Like a gold ring or an ornament of gold. What is a wise suit to a listening ear? Like the cold of snow in the time of harvest are faithful messengers to those who send them. They refresh the spirit of their masters. Like clouds and wind without rain is one who boasts of a gift never given. With patience, a ruler may be persuaded and a soft tongue can break bones. If you have found honey, eat only enough for you or else having too much, you will vomit it. That's true. Let your foot be seldom in your neighbor's house or otherwise the neighbor will become weary of you and hate you. Like a war club, a sword, or a spiteful bow, is one who bears false witness against the neighbor. Like a bad tempter when he put is just to the faithless person and comes trouble. Like vinegar on the wound is one who's 
string songs to a heavy heart, like a moth in closing, or a worm in wood, sorrow gnaws. If your enemies are hungry, give them bread to eat. If they are thirsty, give them wine to drink. For you will heap coals with fire on your heads, and the Lord will reward. As the king of the north wind brings rain, so God's king tongue causes anger. It's better to live alone in the corner of an animal than with a quarrelsome wife in a lovely home. Good news from far away is like a cold, is like cold water to the thirsty. If the godly give in to the wicked, it's like polluting a fountain or muddying a spring. It is not good to eat too much honey, and it's not good to seek honors for yourself. A person who cannot control, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. That's true, but like the city with broken down walls. I um, that I like. Oh, 14. Like clouds and wind without rain is one who boasts of a gift never given. I thought that was fascinating. That he got the gift for given. I mean, the, what I kind of thought about is like those gray, like more springtime, maybe, um, maybe fall or even like summer, not really winter, uh, but those gray overcast days mm -hmm. that just seem like blah, <laughs> you know, either be sunny or give rain so that things can yeah. grow, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that's what it's kind of getting yeah. at. Um, so if you have a gift, give it, I guess, you know, in a sense. I'll be your case with your neighbor directly. Do not disclose another secret. Mm. What else can I hear? He will bring shame on you. That comes up later. Is that, is that something that Jesus did? I have to think this through, that when you disagree with someone, what should you do when people are fighting and arguing and they should they should talk it over with themselves and not yeah. talk to the two people talk it over together first yeah. that comes up is it matthew 17 i'm trying to put, when it flashed through my mind when i read this and now i can't bring it up it's something about you no know, talk to the neighbor first and talk it over and try to work it out don't bring right. anybody else into the conversation. Right. And it, it only makes good sense not to expose your neighbor or whomever. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, to try to keep it a secret. Like at 13, like the cold of snow at the time of harvest, our faithful messengers, they refresh the spirit of the master's cold at the time of harvest. They're saying that should be a good thing. Now here we have, don't eat too much honey. <laughs> it will make you sick. That's true. I mean, anything sweet, if you're having too much, it's, you know. Um, so it, it is Matthew 15. Okay. Um, and explain it. And Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you still without understanding? Do, do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer, but what comes out of, out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this is what defiles. Um, kind of like, yeah, he, it's Matthew 15. Hold on, maybe not. I thought it was, I thought I read it and then it was like,
Yeah. Uh, Math um, 18, here we go. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. Yes, if the me member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two yes. others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Yeah. So there, Matthew 18, it's close. Yeah. Well, there that was is good, no, good um really it's yes. just when you have an issue go to the person drink water have yeah. coffee do tea something yeah. figure it out but there were some other places that i was like i think jesus says mm -hmm. <laughs> about that too oh 21 if your enemies are hungry give them bread to eat and if they are thirsty give them water to drink that was another yeah. well, must have known all this. Oh, well. absolutely. Well, yeah. I was in that book for a long time. Mm -hmm. I learned that that we kind of write off the Old Testament in these days. We're very much in the Old Testament. They said, don't write off the Old Testament. That was Jesus' Bible. And Jesus knew it well, and that's what he oh, preached. Right. Exactly. In our um, the Luther seminary study, said the pointed out verses six and like the first half of seven. Um, do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here. Yeah. Um, don't think too much of yourself, they say. Be humble is the summary. Well, isn't it Jesus that said, sit in the back of exactly. the church and the wedding so that you can be brought Right, and come up there. here, yep. And, and they... Earlier. Not important enough getting the back. Uh, they, yeah, they highlighted Luke 14 verses okay. 7 to yeah. 11 because that, that was another one that I was like, man, Jesus was on top of it. Time. Yeah. Yeah. I like the Old Testament. I like it. Well, and this is kind of, this is peppered with history too. Yeah. Um, and you can see where Jesus was prostituted. And it's amazing how it relates to. Oh, sure. You know, mm -hmm. and this is written how many thousand years ago. Mm -hmm. they, and they also highlighted verses 11 and 12, which is that that kind of tickled my ear. A word uh, fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver, like a gold ring or an ornament of gold is a wise rebuke to the listening ear. It, and they summarize it as think before you talk. But these are similes and um, yeah. Verse yeah. 13, did they talk about snow? Did the Israelites ever see snow? Yeah, they did. Oh, did they? Yeah, oh. yeah, it's definitely I heard possible. This 45% have never seen snow. Wow. And one third of people have never built a snow. And I thought, oh, my word, our lives are full of it. And all these people have never, it's never been a part of their lives. Wow. Two of our exchange students, one, the one from Indonesia and the one from Egypt, uh, were they, that was their thing that they wanted. Oh, yeah. It's just of to course. build a snowman. Yeah. yeah. We sure did. Sure. I mean, yeah. Sure. I, I told you that I was a child in college in the class. I couldn't wait to. I mean, he just could not wait. Yep. Yep. So, but, you know, um, the one from Lebanon. You that you can go she up the mountains and oh, you can okay. like ski one day and then an hour drive to the Mediterranean and you can swim in the ocean in the same day if you really wanted to. Yeah. Well, I remember years um, seeing how they take a, a big box car on a train, you know, a big box sure. car and fill it full of snow and take it down to Texas and dump it yeah. in a in a playground yeah. for the kids. Yeah. If your enemies are hungry, give them bread to eat. I thought about bread during your service last night because did you? I know that in in have you ever been to the big museum in Milwaukee? It's a fabulous fact. It's closed now because they're renovating, but they had a whole big giant area of a little room of every nationality when they came that came to Milwaukee 
Oh, and sure. And they, and I, I remember arms, and I said, watch these little rooms. Every one of them has some kind of a trunk for mm. coming over mm. and a Bible of some type and a loaf of bread. And oh, yeah. Everyone, every yeah. Day, they had all these strange loaves of bread or slices of bread or whatever, and the chest. Yeah. And the, and the ones with the round tops were the, the richer people. The richer people. All got put on the tops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 And to us, a bread is kind of a side dish. Sure. A lot of people, I remember yeah. Kathy's dad, made them. Kathy's dad had a lot of bread at every meal. I always remember he wouldn't, we, we, we served him tacos. We never ate tacos when we were kids. We didn't have them. And we learned to make tacos after we were in Mozambique. And we took taco stuff to um, Kathy's house to share with their parents. And, and he got up and went and got bread. He had dead bread in his tacos. <laughs> but some people go bread for their whole they, lives. Yeah, every day they made bread, yeah. you know. And they'd have to make the flour and stuff first. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, and I had to look it up. But the Hebrew word for snow is shelleg. Ah. Shelleg. Yeah, I didn't realize that. I guess I don't know enough. I, I didn't know. I mean, I know Hebrew, but I didn't remember yeah. the word for snow. Yeah. But I had to of look it up. Kathy tells me the greyhound is the only type of dog that's mentioned in the Bible. That's oh, the greyhound really? is actually in the Bible. Oh, so it must be, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably not at all. Well, that would be another study. Maybe the, the, the odd birds of, hey, that would be fun. The she, odd birds of the Bible. That would be good. I it's like one, one time when I read pomegranate, I'm like, wow. And I have read that they don't think it was an apple. That, no, they think it was a pomegranate. Yeah. Well, I think we got it and then we'll tackle the next verses.